Hey, hey, welcome back to Business 150, Introduction to Management. We are continuing on in Module 5, our look at the topic of global business. And as you can see from this title slide, we're now dealing with the topic of international trade agreements. International trade agreements. And really, this is the topic of what have national governments done to try to encourage international trade, to provide a smoother path for companies in different countries to work with and for one another, to the mutual benefit not only of those two companies, but also consumers, citizens of different countries, and in fact, entire national governments. So this is important stuff. This is big stuff on the world stage. So let's climb into this because we hope that after this video, you'll be able to summarize the current state of various trade agreements and alliances that have developed around the world and how they influence actual international business activities these days. So where do we want to start? Let's start right after World War II. Okay, that's as good a place as any. Why are we starting back in history? Because really the story of our modern outlook on, mo on, on international trade, on global business, was formed in the ashes of World War II. Because at the end of World War II, many countries around the world were devastated physically, politically, economically. And so how do you dig yourself out of an economic hole if all of your infrastructure has been destroyed because of World War II? Well, what happened was at the very ending days of World War II, when it was clear that the Allies were going to win the war, there was a meeting between many different allied nations at Bretton Woods in New Hampshire, where they kind of agreed on several things. One of which is that we all would like to prevent ever World War III from ever happening. What's the best way for us to not only rebuild our world, but also to prevent World War III from ever happening? Let's make it easier for countries to trade with one another. Why is that? because international trade has an interesting consequence. It makes it difficult for countries to bomb each other if they're selling millions or billions of dollars worth of products to each other. It's bad form. It gets in the way of trade to bomb your trade partner or to l invade your customer's country, right? So w international trade was always understood to be a way to help people to stay connected and stay in relationship. And as a result, we came out with some general agreements about trade known as GATT, and that eventually evolved into the World Trade Organization. You see the logo right there, right? So we presently have, still have the World Trade Organization doing some work to try and promote world trade in conjunction with bodies like the United Nations. And what's the final verdict on how effective they've been? Well, I want to just tell you right at the outset, from my perspective as a business instructor and as a business person, I would tell you the World Trade Organization, if I was going to grade them, I would give them a C minus. If I was to grade the United Nations, I'd probably give them a C or maybe a C plus, maybe. But I certainly wouldn't give them an A or a B because they haven't really been that effective in regulating and promoting international trade. Why is that? One very simple reason. None of these organizational uh, bodies have a police force. If they reach a decision, there's no way to enforce the decision because there's no teeth in it. There's no world police. And therefore, when great big huge country decides we're not going to treat our small little trade partner country fairly, and the little country complains and says, this isn't right, this is not just, this is not what we agreed upon. When a group like the World Trade Organization says, hey, you big country, you got to stop acting like this. You got to start acting appropriately. The big country can simply say, make us. And that's the end of the story because, quite frankly, there's no police to come in and enforce it. That has been historically a big problem with these very large global organizations trying to promote and enforce fair trade rules between trading partners. Oh, well, that's kind of a depressing kind of a thought. So is has anything else been done? Yes, there has. You can see here on this slide, there have been several regional trade alliances that have formed as a result. Since there's no global police force, 
then let's the three or the four of us all agree to hold ourselves accountable to certain terms. And you can see some of these organizations like the North American Free Trade Agreement or NAFTA, the European Union or the EU, um, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, and the Southern Common Market, primarily in Latin, uh, I'm sorry, in South America, uh, known as Mercosur. And each of these groups has been relatively effective, quite frankly, at promoting trade between its member nations. While you may have read in the media some mixed opinions, for instance, upon the success of NAFTA, you cannot deny statistically that NAFTA has increased the level of international trade and imports and exports between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. It has been, in that sense, a very strong advocate for international trade between our three countries. The same is true with the European Union as well and somewhat less effective results with ASEAN and Mercosur, but nevertheless, they have been very strong advocates, all of them, to promote real free trade, where, for instance, the World Trade Organization and um, the, the United Nations have not really been that effective. This next slide shows you uh, currently the countries in the European Union, uh, including at the bottom there, United Kingdom, although they're pending Brexit. Uh, but you can see there's many European countries uh, in the EU and others are continuing to petition to be included in the EU. For instance, most significantly, Turkey, uh, a country that has all sorts of interesting things going on politically and uh, controversially has applied to be a member of the EU, being considered at present. And so we hope that you are at least able to sort of intelligently summarize now the various trade agreements and alliances that have been tried, that are currently still in place, as well as their general effect on international trade, how they develop worldwide, how they influence current business activities in the international realm to this day. So I hope this has been really helpful for you. Hope it, it may, it, you know, if nothing else, I hope that it helps to make sense of some of the things you may be reading in great newspapers and sources of international news for you to be able to understand what they're talking about with some of these organizations and acronyms that we use when we talk about multinational or global business. Hope that's helpful, and we will see you in the next lecture.